you think a man can marry another man? I do. OK, Forbes has said more about her controversial Christian opinions in one afternoon than she has in the previous six years as an MSP. And that was inevitable. Sanders' leadership is going to come under greater scrutiny. I would commend her courage in giving straight answers to a lot of questions, even though that was obviously going to count against her and was going to generate some uh, hostility. But I make this video again, I remind you, as a political uh, opponent. So we might be on the same heavenly team, you might say, but we're on different uh, earthly teams. I'm making that video from this uh, perspective. But the first thing I would say is Kate has stated that she disagrees with same-sex marriage, and I would like to say I agree with her. When I had my case with the General Teaching Council of Scotland, I was under fire, uh, quite a bit of media reporting, because I said the children need a mum and a dad ideally. I had quite a few supportive messages uh, behind the scenes, but what I craved in that situation was public agreement. I wanted churches, church leaders, organisations, anyone just to say publicly they agreed with me at the central point that I've made. But that was pretty thin on the ground. So I decided much to myself, whenever someone else is in a similar situation, I will always say what I believe alongside them. So Kate, I agree. I disagree with same-sex marriage. Now, some MPs and MSPs who endorsed Kate Forbes' campaign have now de-endorsed it. Now she's made these comments and she's facing questions from the media like, is your campaign over already? Well, let's have a look at what Kate said then for a start about same-sex marriage. Do you think a man can marry another man? I do, under the legal provisions in this country. Uh, I am a servant of democracy in this country. Uh, equal marriage is a legal right, and therefore uh, it, I would defend that legal commitment. Incidentally, though, I would hope that others can defend the rights of other minorities, including religious minorities, that might take a different view. What's your position on the morality of the issue? In terms of the morality of the issue, I am a practising Christian. I practice the um, teachings of most mainstream religions, whether that's Islam, Judaism, Christianity, um, that marriage is between a man and a woman. But that's what I practice. As a servant of democracy in a country where this is law, I would defend to the hilt your right and anybody else's right to live and to love without harassment or fear. OK, being a servant of democracy, I'm not sure about that. Where does leadership come in? Do we just accept the decision of the majority? Do you not seek to shift public opinion to change things in the future? Now, in using the term equal marriage as well, I think you're conceding quite a lot using the term equal marriage. It's quite hard to disagree with something described as equal uh, marriage. And Kate says she would defend the legality of same-sex marriage. Now, I don't quite understand that. If you say you would vote against it, how can you then say you, you want to preserve it in place? I, I think there's a contradiction there. Now, Kate was asked about the morality of same-sex marriage, and she didn't answer about its morality. She answered about its practice, but that wasn't the question. I mean, Kate said that she didn't practice that. I mean, I assume Kate didn't decide to marry a man because of you know, biblical teaching about same-sex marriage. Um, so I think she dodged the question there to some degree. But she said she'd defend to the hill to the right to live and love without harassment and fear. Now there, Kate is trying to use the language of the other side, which is fine. She's trying to speak their language. And what she said there, do I agree with it? Absolutely. Uh, people in you know, homosexual relationships, do I defend their right to live and love without harassment and fear? Very definitely. When people hear that, might it be a bit misleading? Might they assume that Kate's meaning that she's okay with that? She thinks that's all fine. Most people probably would think that. Does that mean it's misleading? It's a, it's a bit of a grey area, isn't it? Now, I would assume that Kate's actual view is that homosexual relationships are immoral and they're not good for people. And heterosexual marriage, the institution should be promoted by the state because it embodies the ideal of natural family life, best for children, best for adults, best for society in general. Now, in the position Kate finds herself in, in this leadership campaign, she cannot possibly lay out the positive case for her opposition to same-sex marriage. In other words, she's having to sideline her own views. And the impression given is she feels that her faith beliefs, the beliefs founded in, the, in Christian teaching, have actually got nothing to contribute to political discussion in Scotland at the moment. And my fear with that is that she'll be seen as a role model. And other Christians, people of other faiths as well, will think that's the way you're supposed to do it. 
you, you you can mention your views you don't lie about them but then you just put them to one side because you don't actually think they've got anything to contribute now i say kate has to do that in the situation she's in and it's just a symptom of being in the wrong party now let's see what kate had to say about gender recognition reform do you think someone should be able to simply declare that they are a woman if they were born biologically male i don't think self-identification is sufficient but that's the heart of the bill isn't it it is so that's my point so it's not I just a little amendment you're talking about a fundamental rewriting of this well there's bill. two parts to this one is you've asked me what my view is on the current bill and that's what i'm telling you in terms of self-id but in terms of where we go next the commitment i would make is to engage in discussions with the uk government about the amendments that need to be made because this is a bill that was passed by three quarters by the scottish uh, Parliament. So it's a, a bill that has been voted on um, by the Scottish Parliament and I would want to understand what amendments need to be made to make that bill compatible. Okay, she opposes self-identification. Again, I would guess, and I'm guessing here, that what she really thinks is she really agrees with me. She really opposes the whole ideology of transgenderism. But in her position, in her attempts to win the leadership of the SNP, she has to try to unite the party. So there's no point uh, in her position taking a position that's going to alienate a huge swathe of the uh, of the party and the the party membership so she's saying that the gender recognition reform needs tweaking but how do you tweak it exactly i mean currently you need no doctor two doctors to sign they were going to change it to no doctors so what just have one doctor at the time the transition time six months instead of three months the age i don't know 17 instead of 16 i'm not sure how you can tweak it but I say, but Kate sort of has to do that. She has to try and steer a middle course in order to get elected a leader of the SNP. Now, what Kate's not in a position to do is to make the case against transgender ideology, which is what is really needed in this country. That's what's really needed in the Parliament, but it would need to be someone else doing that. And that's where the Scottish Family Party come in. Um, we do need to see reform of the Gender Recognition Act. Um, we do need to make it a less onerous process now, in calling for a less onerous gender change process, well, I think Kate Forbes might come to regret that, to be honest, because that amounts to endorsing transgender ideology. If you're saying you want to make it easier for people to change gender, then I think that's implying that you're seeing tr changing gender as a positive thing. So I think Kate's been doing a balancing act through these interviews. And in my humble opinion, I think she fell off the tightrope for a moment there. But let's see what she had to say about buffer zones. Where would you stand on something like abortion buffer zones, which is coming up? Well, I think all women that are going for terminations, many of them emotionally vulnerable women, should do so free from harassment and harm. Uh, so I think it's a question of engaging with the Green MSP, Gillian Mackay, who's taking forward that bill, engaging with her so that we have a balanced bill that does tackle harassment, but is also uh, targeted. I think that was a very clever answer. She wants women to be free from harassment and harm. In other words, she, again, she's using the lines of the other side of the argument. Uh, and I would agree with that. Women going for abortions should be free from harassment and harm. But when Kate Forbes says she thinks a buffer zone legislation should be targeted, I'm pretty sure what she's thinking is her definition of harassment and harm might be different than most campaigners for buffer zones. Because their definition of harassment and harm is extremely wide and what i was reading between the lines of what kate said she would want something much more narrow so maybe it would stop people you know shouting or approaching people rather than standing there quietly praying now you can ask the question there what kate said was it deliberately intended to give the impression she thinks something different than she does i think it was a bit close to the wire I think the media are interpreting these situations. They generally don't understand. They, they don't seem to be able to read between the lines. Uh, but anyway, so I believe that's Kate's position there. You are undoubtedly going to face calls during this leadership contest for your views on your faith and on progressive politics. A lot of people in the party feel that you're not progressive enough. Well, I'm a member of the SNP and I believe that no office should be removed from any candidate on the basis of protected characteristics, including faith. I think there's a way to square my faith as well as my membership and leadership of the SNP, and that includes things like having to love my neighbour. 
Now, this argument about religion being a protected characteristic, I don't really think that's a good argument. In the field of politics, you judge people according to their beliefs. And if you don't like what they believe, then you can reject them politically within your party or at the ballot box. That's what democracy uh, is all about. Um, so if someone's got a belief, a politician's got a belief, it's perfectly acceptable to judge them on the basis of that belief. If you regard that belief as uh, highly incredible, that might undermine your confidence in that politician's intellectual capability, uh, or their beliefs might cause you to question their morality or their character. And those decisions are perfectly valid. I don't think religion can be held up as a, oh, you know, the Equality Act doesn't let you judge you judge me on my religious beliefs. I, I just don't buy that. Now, the idea of being progressive. Now, if I was asked that, what I would like to say, what I would say, is that most things that are labelled as progressive, I think they're actually bad things. So I'd imagine Kate Forbes as well. Most things that are called progressive, she would actually disagree with them. But she can't say that in the position she's in. That would be too divisive. So her answer to the charge of not being progressive enough is that she's in the SNP. And the SNP is a very progressive party, but basically Kate Forbes isn't, which brings me back to the uh, central issue I keep coming back to in this video that, in my humble opinion, she's in the wrong party. Now, let's bring in one of the other leadership contenders now. Let's listen to Hamza Yousaf. Lots of comments and questions have been raised about faith because, yeah. because of Kate Forbes' religious views. Is it fair, do you think, in a political uh, battle to scrutinise somebody's faith? I mean, I think it depends. So I'm, I, I'm Muslim. Uh, I don't hide from the fact I'm very, very proud to be Muslim. In a few weeks' time, I'll be fasting during the campaign, which will be uh, a lot of fun. Um, and what I would say is the difference is that my faith, and as strong as my faith is, and I believe uh, and I practice uh, my faith, it's not the basis for legislating for me. And that's why my track record will show you, and we've talked about some of the issues that I support um, and, and, and for issues that are coming up in the future. For example, my support for buffer zones uh, in relation to abortion services. You know, I don't legislate on the basis of faith. I legislate as a representative on the basis of what I think is best for the country. Uh, if somebody else legislates on the basis of faith, then those questions are, are, are for them. But it's not the basis of how I decide law or policy should be made. Well, the first thing I'd say there is he's just got zero gravitas. I don't think he's coming across like a first minister at all. But Hamza assures us that he wouldn't legislate on the basis of his faith. He would legislate on what's best for the nation. So I assume, logically, Hamza Yousaf doesn't think the teachings of his faith translate into what's best for the nation. So why did Allah give these moral teachings if it's not what's best for the country? Why do you believe them if they're not what's best for people? It doesn't seem to make any sense at all. If God has revealed or implanted in us a set of moral values, why has he done that? I believe he's done that for the good of individuals, for the good of families, for the good of nations, for, for the good of the whole of society. That's what I believe. I, I believe God's standards, God's wisdom is for the good of everyone. Now, Hamza obviously doesn't think that. He, he thinks that God's wisdom and God's values, they're just for the special Muslim club. They don't have any application in wider society. Now, the things Kate was saying, I mean, Kate was sort of sounding as if she sort of agrees with that as well. I've got these personal opinions, but I can put those to one side. So Humza and Kate are basically agreeing, but they're having, well, Humza's having a go at Kate, even though she agrees. I mean, but, but the real issue, obviously, is Kate's views. It's not the fact that she's saying it would influence her political decisions. It's the fact that she even holds those views. But basically, as so many times in Scotland, what a mess and muddle of a debate. Now, when people go to join, uh, people with similar views to myself, or I, I'm assuming generally the Kate Holes, when they go to join a mainstream party, I normally say to them, I don't think it's a good idea, because you might well find that you're running into a brick wall. You might find your first two years delivering leaflets, and you're getting to know everyone, that might be great. And then, But at some point, you'll put yourself forward as a candidate, and they'll vet you, they'll check, or you'll be put on the spot, they'll find out what you think, and you'll find you are running into a brick wall and they will reject you. Or you might have to make the decision. You lie about your beliefs or you'll be rejected by your party. So Kate is doing her best not to be dishonest and to sound palatable to the broader SNP. Now, Kate Forbes and I, I think we agree on uh, most of these issues, probably a lot of others as well, but we disagree on the strategy currently. But in my video I made yesterday, I said that there's a risk 
the Kate might find herself under pressure and might lie about her beliefs, might deny what she really believes, or she might refuse to answer difficult questions. But I commend Kate that she hasn't done those two things. Uh, I think harder questions are to come. I think that the question, do you think homosexual sex is immoral, is a more difficult question. And the question, uh, do you think abortion should be illegal? Or would you like to see more uh, restrictions on illegal on abortion? Do you think abortion should be immoral? They're tougher questions that I guess would be coming down the line. I was fascinated to hear just a few minutes before I started this video, William Hague, the prominent conservative MP, stating that someone with Kate Forbes's values couldn't be leader of the Conservative Party. That was his opinion. William Hague's view, someone with Kate Forbes views couldn't be leader of the Conservative Party. Now that's quite a sobering thought, isn't it? Now, if Kate Forbes wins this, becomes First Minister, will that be a good thing? I don't know. Watch the video from yesterday. I don't know how that would work out. Maybe it would, maybe it wouldn't. I've got uh, reservations about that. But let's watch this space and see how things develop. Again, I'll just finish by re-emphasising that I understand that the vacancy for the Deputy Treasurer of the Scottish Family Party, Dingwall East Branch, is still open. And we can send the application form to uh, anyone in the area who's interested in applying. Right, thanks for watching.